Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjan. Oh, I'm muted. Omagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya. Chatsur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Teshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadikor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our study of the nectar of instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. So this evening we want to look at the final text, text number 11. Before we do so, let's just review the previous text. First of all, going maybe from the beginning, since this is the final class, we'll just review the whole text. In the beginning, Srila Rupa Goswami began by telling us about the urges which we have to deal with, which we have to be able to control if we genuinely want to progress in Krishna Consciousness. And those urges were mentioned, all six, right? The urge to speak, the mind's demands, reactions of anger, and the urges of the tongue, the belly, and the genitals. And when they're not controlled, then the results are described in text number two, that there will be overeating, over-endeavouring for mundane things, difficult to achieve, there will be nonsense talking, we may be too much attached to the rules and regulations or neglectful of the rules and regulations, we may be uh, very uh, greedy, low yum, right, for mundane, greedy for Maybe, or maybe due to restlessness, I think that word loyum is like that, it's like a restlessness that you move, you think maybe everything is not in bhakti, we look other places. Like that, six items, which Uttahan, Nishya, Daya, Tat Tat, Karma, oh no, that, those are the favourable items, right? Atyahara, Prayashas, Prajopo, Niyamagraha, Jana Sangha, Loyamcha. So these things, Jana Sangha, associating with non-devotees, that's also very dangerous for our Krishna consciousness. And then text number three de describes the six principles which are favourable for advancing, for our progress. The first three Prabhupada said in every activity they should be there. Enthusiasm, confidence, determination. And particularly in our Krishna consciousness. That's the right attitude. And then how to mold our life. That's the second half of the verse. Tata karma pravartana sangat chagat satovrite. Executing principles like hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna and then also uh, 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 rejecting non-devotees, meaning we should associate with devotees 
and we should follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas, cultivating devotion for Lord Krishna. Then text 4 goes on to describe loving exchanges between one devotee and another. Very important for us to cultivate that mood, friendly relationships with the devotees. We often come have problems, we argue and we fight with each other, we allow the personality of Kali to enter into our midst and it dis disrupts our mood of devotion. So we have to be very conscious not to let Kali come in and disrupt us. So it's very good to keep loving relationships by these activities, giving prasadam and accepting prasadam, giving gifts, accepting gifts and inquiring and revealing one's mind in confidence. And then Rupa Goswami then goes on to describe how to choose what, what, which particular devotees we should exchange these different items of love with. And we hear about the Kanista and the Madhyam and the Uttama, how somebody may just have began to chant so we respect them in the mind and then someone else is constantly chanting or he's worshipping the deity, is engaged in uh, devotional service, maybe also doing preaching work, uh, he's undergone spiritual initiation so we offer obeisances to him and we associate with him faithfully serve the devotee who is advanced in undeviating devotional service and is devoid of the propensity to criticize others. And then Rupa Goswami, next verse, describes that we should not be deterred by a devotee's external features. We have to see the internal character of a devotee. Sometimes we uh, discriminate on, against someone on the basis of their race or the colour of their skin or their height or their, maybe they're very fat or very thin, or maybe they're very ugly or maybe they're very good looking. We, we, we discriminate on people according to their physical natures. So we have to transcend these things and see within see the actual spiritual nature of a person. And the example was given about bathing in the Ganga, that people who are wise will bathe in Mother Ganges without considering the bubbles and the foam and the mud. Right? And then text number seven described about the chanting of the Holy Name, that we're often influenced by material attachment, so many anarthas we have, and we describe the different anarthas, anarthas due to offences, anarthas due to weakness of heart, anarthas due to misunderstanding of the philosophy, uh, like the different anarthas. Huh? Uh, so anarthas, they destroy our taste for the holy name. And we have to constantly practice how to overcome the material disease. The material disease was compared to jaundice and Srila Prabhupada writes because in Prabhupada's time they didn't have medicines like what they have now. Nowadays people tell me there is a medicine for jaundice but in Prabhupada's time the one medicine was there, sugar cane, sugar candy, sugar cane juice. That was a, and they said the same way there's only one cure for the disease of materialism and that is the chanting of the holy name. Chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna can take away our taste for material sense gratification and give us the ecstasy of spiritual life. So the chanting of the holy name was recommended. Then we went on to text number 8 and we heard about making spiritual advancement, if one has actually progressed in their, in their spiritual practice, then he may be qualified 
to take the mood of Vrindavan, enter into the mood of Vrindavan, maybe even to physically go there and to absorb himself 24 hours a day in simply chanting the holy name and remembering and discussing and describing the qualities, pastimes, form and activities of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. That was text number eight. He was talking about Upadesha Saram, the essence of all advice to, to absorb oneself 24 hours a day in nicely hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. Then text number nine was describing the hierarchy of different holy places. And we heard how Vaikuntha is superior to the material world, but Mathura, being the birthplace of Lord Krishna, is superior to Vaikuntha and superior to Mathura are the forests of Vrindavan where Lord Krishna performed his Rasa Lila and superior to the forests of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill because Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill and held it for a week to protect all the devotees and to enjoy intimate association with all his devotees in Vrindavan. And then, superior to Govardhan, is Radhakund, which is the place where Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani could enjoy intimacy and confidentiality in their dealings, in their exchange, in the loving exchange. Because less people, less devotees were there at Radhakund. So that was the hierarchy of places. Then text 10, went on to describe the hierarchy among the devotees. And we heard, first of all, about fruitive workers, or simply karmis. Now, some karmis are vikarmis. They, they don't follow any regulative principles, and they're just simply interested in sense gratification. And they're sinful. But then you've got other people who are karmis, who are a little pious and they follow according to the Vedas and they do sacrifices and their motive, they're thinking about going to the heavenly planets or enjoying a higher form of life here in this world. But above the karmi, above the fruit of worker is the jnani, the jnani who has already exhausted his material attempts for enjoying the material world. He's thinking more about enjoying liberation and he's thinking about how to get out of the material world. You know, jnani. And the best of all, the, but if the jnani doesn't come to devotional service, he's still in ignorance. So the goal of knowledge, the goal of the jnani is to actually come to devotional service. So among the devotees, some there are pure devotees, and the best of all the pure devotees were, was described to be the gopis of Vrindavan because they sacrificed everything for Krishna without any expectation of anything in return. They just wanted to give themselves, to give everything, even their own bodies for the service of Krishna. So within the Madhurya Ras, exhibited by the gopis, they, they completed all the other rasas, serving and friendship, maintaining and conjugal love. So the best of all the gopis, best of all the devotees, the pure devotees are the gopis. And among the gopis, the best of the gopis is Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is described as being the best of, among all the gopis because she gives the greatest pleasure to Krishna. She has the, the, the strongest love for Krishna and she wants to give everything for the pleasure of Krishna. Uh, and Krishna is greatly attracted by the loving service of Srimati Radharani. 
So of all the gopis, Srimati Radharani is considered topmost because she gives the, she loves Krishna the, the best and Krishna gets the greatest pleasure from the company of Srimati Radharani. And then non different from Srimati Radharani is Radha Kund. So in this way the hierarchy of the devotees was described in text number 10. So now tonight we're going to go on to text number 11. We want to look through text number 11 and see what Shil, how Srila Prabhupada concludes this nectar of instruction. So I'm going to switch to screen sharing. All right, maybe we can ask the, who likes to chant, who's good in chanting? What's the name? Gita. That Madhiji was chanting very nicely. Gita Induleka, Madhiji. Hare Krishna Mahatma. Yeah, you can chant for us. Krishna se ujjay pranaya vasti preya si bhayo piradha Kundam chaste munir bhid abhisastra drage vya bhai Yat preshtai apya lama sulbham kim punar bhakti bhajam Tat premedam sakrita pisara sanato ravish karoti Yes, and the translation? Of the many objects of favored delight and of all the lovable damsels of Braj Bhumi, Srimati Radha Rani is certainly the most treasured object of Krishna's love. And in every respect, her divine Kunda is described by great sages as similar dear to him. Similarly dear to him. Undoubtedly, Radha Kund is very rarely attained even by the great devotees. Therefore, it is even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain. If one simply bathes once within these holy waters, one's pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. All right. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, we, can, we hear this uh, statement from Srila Rupa Goswami. If one simply bathes once, within those holy waters, one's pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. Right? Now, I think when we asked, who, has any of you bathed there, some of the devotees were saying they had bathed there, right? So, did you awaken your pure love of Krishna? Of course, we also read that from the nectar of devotion, we read the quote which where, where it was described that in some cases it may happen and it may not. Not that it has to happen in every case. The scriptures are like that. They describe benedictions, benefits which may be taken by doing certain activities, but it's not that in each and every case it will be like that. And we discussed also how there's a particular mood which one has to have to bathe there and enter into the holy waters. And the more we enter into that mood, then the more we will get the benefit. And we quoted also Giriraj Swami Maharaj. Maybe you remember he was saying that if we really want to get the benefit, then we have to follow all the instructions which are given in the first ten verses of this uh, nectar of instruction, beginning from the beginning. Now some people, sometimes people get this book and they get the idea, oh, let's go to Radha Kund, with, you know, and they have no qualification. So they go there and if they bathe in Radha Kund, they don't get the real benefit because they're not, they have not purified themselves and they have not conquered even the urges which are mentioned in the very beginning. So from the very beginning one has to practice carefully, follow all the instructions as they are given here 
in this Upadesha Amrita. Very important. So can we ask someone to please read for us? All right, maybe we can have Radha Kishori Maharaji read. Uh, why is Radha Kund so exalted? The lake is so exalted because it belongs to Srimati Radharani, who is the most beloved object of Sri Krishna. Amongst all the gopis, she is the most beloved. Similarly, her lake, Sri Radha Kund, is also described by great sages as the lake that is as dear to Krishna as Radha herself. Indeed, Krishna's love for Radha Kund and Srimati Radharani is the same in all respects. Radha Kund is very rarely attained, even by the great personalities fully engaged in devotional service. Not to speak of ordinary devotees who are only engaged in the practice of Vedi Bhakti. Thank you, Maharaji. Yes, uh, so Srila Prabhupada is writing very gravely, warning us that he says, Radha Kund is very rarely attained even by great personalities who are fully engaged in devotional service. And of course, who are we? We are, we are the ordinary devotees who are only doing the Vaidhi Bhakti. But the Prabhupada said even these great personalities who are beyond Vaidhi Bhakti, who are maybe must be doing Raga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti, but even they are not able to fully attain or and get the full benefit of this Radha Kund. This Radha Kund is not different from Srimati Radharani. So Radha Kund and Srimati Radharani is the same in all respects. Now, just like if we were to meet Srimati Radharani personally, directly, now how we would feel, you know, she's the, the topmost personality, the, 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 the personality who Krishna loves so much that she can capture the mind of Lord Krishna. And we should have the same mood with Radha Kund, understanding Radha Kund not to be different from Srimati Radharani. So we must have the greatest respect and reverence in approaching Radha Kund. So very important for us to understand how to relate to holy places. And of all the holy places, this Radha Kund is considered the most, the most purified, the most, the topmost of all holy places, of all chirtas, of all dams, it is the highest place. So we have to have the greatest respect and give it the greatest care and, and, and know how to properly enter into this mode of understanding the position of Radha Kund. Someone else like to go on and read more? Maybe Shopa Maharaji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes, go ahead. Um, it is stated that a devotee will at once develop pure love of Krishna in the wake of the gopis if he once takes a bath in Radha Kund. Shlarupa Goswami recommends that even if one cannot live permanently on the banks of Radha Kund, he should at least take a bath in the lake as many times as possible. This is a most important item in the execution of devotional service. Shla Bhaktivinu Thakur writes in this connection that Sri Radha Kund is the most select place for those interested in advancing their devotional service in the wake of the lady friends Sakhis and confidential serving maids Manjaris of Srimati Radharani. 
living entities who are eager to return home to the transcendental kingdom of God, Goloka Vrindavan, by means of attaining their spiritual bodies, Siddha Deha, should live at Radhakund. Take shelter of the confidential serving maids of Sri Radha and under their direction engage constantly in her service. This is the most exalted method for those engaged in devotional service under the protection of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this connection... All right, maybe you can just stop there. Uh, let's discuss what we've been reading here. All right, so a devotee can develop pure love for Krishna in the wake of the gopis simply by bathing in Radha Kund. So is it su such an easy thing that we can just simply take a bath in Radha Kund? Well, it's possible, but it's not going to happen for everyone at every time, every, on every occasion. But in some cases, it will certainly happen. One has to understand that it's not going to be there for it. It will depend a lot on the, the particular person and his qualification to receive that mercy. In the wake of the gopis, we said the gopis are the topmost devotees. So we want to get, develop that mood of the gopis. Remember, the mood, we said the mood of the gopis was to give everything for Krishna without thinking of anything in return. They had no desire, they didn't want to ask anything from Krishna. They just simply wanted to give service to Krishna. So we can develop that mood of the gopis, then that can help us to get more benefit from taking the bath in Radha Kund. So Rupa Goswami said even best is if you can go and live there, go and live in Radha Kund. Some, some devotees live there. We know we have, a, we have, for example, we have a temple there for Iskon. There is a Samadhi of His Holiness Bhakti Swarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj. He had, he was, because he was from Manipur, so the, the royal family in Manipur, they had given Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj the two temples. They gave him the temple in one temple in Navadweep and they also gave him one temple in Radha Kund. So when Swarup Damodar Maharaj departed from this world, his body was put in samadhi there in Radha Kund at the temple. And it's a very beautiful samadhi. You can go there and you can offer your obeisances to the samadhi of Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj. Radhakund is a small place, you know, it's just a little vill a village really. But the temple is very nice and some devotees live there. And there's also a small Iskon temple nearby. So if you like to visit, then it's possible, you can go there. But it's not encouraged to stay there unless you have a particular service, unless you have some real service there. Better to be around the major temple, like in in Vrindavan or Krishna Balaram temple. I told you, Prabhupada didn't. He worried about our devotees being there in Radha Kund because so many unusual people are there, and you may be unfortunate. You may meet the wrong kind of people and fall into bad association. And they may look like devotees, but you don't know actually who they are. So you have to be very careful. So when we go to these kind of places like Radha Kund, we always go in the association of devotees. We don't go alone. We need to go with a group of devotees. Don't try to visit these places on your own. Otherwise, you may have problems. You can get difficulties. It's so very important to be with a group of devotees. And if you're a group, then it's much easier. The leader of the group can take you around and introduce you to the different places and tell you what to watch out for. And he will 
be checking, helping to ensure the security, safety of the people in the group. So that's, that's how you can go to these kind of places like Radhakund. But Prabhupada does mention here, this is the most important item in the execution of devotional service. So although Prabhupada uh, was upset that the devotees had abused the privilege of bathing in Radhakund, that uh, he does mention here it's a most important item. And we do see that a number of senior devotees in our Krishna consciousness movement, they do sometimes go there and take bath at Radhakund. Some don't, but some do. I won't mention names. But anyway, it's therefore I say before you go there and bathe, better is to check with your own spiritual master and inquire from him, is it permissible, do you sanction me going there, taking bath there in Radhakund? So it's a, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, it's uh, the, the most select place for those interested in, in, in advancing devotional service in the wake of the lady friends, namely the sakis, sakis or gopis and confidential serving maids, the manjaris, manjaris meaning the young gopis who are very intimate in serving Radha and Krishna because they're young. So they're allowed to witness the confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna. They don't get disturbed because they're young and very young bodies. So we want to cultivate that mood of the gopis or the manjaris. Then this Radha Kund is a very suitable place to advance that mood. Living entities who are eager to return home to the Kingdom of God by means of attaining their spirit, spiritual bodies should live at Radhakund, right? So spiritual bodies, the Siddha Deha, I explained I think previous class, Siddha Deha means our, our spiritual form, the form which we have in the spiritual world. It may be a four-arm form if it's in Vaikuntha, it may be two-arm form if it's in Goloka. And we want to go to Goloka, generally people in Vrindavan, and they're cultivating this Raga Bhakti and their intention, they want to go into Goloka. I thought it would be a two-arm form, but Siddha Deha it would depend on your particular rasa, what kind of body you take. Some people may become cow, some people may be tree, some people may be Krishna's flute, somebody's Krishna's parent, somebody's a friend, somebody's a gopi, different rasas. And so we, living, living at Radhakund can help us to cultivate this uh, consciousness of going back to Goloka Vrindavan. But it's not only living in Radhakund, we have to take shelter of the confidential serving maids of Sri Radha and under their direction engage constantly in her service. So taking shelter of the confidential serving maids of Sri Radha, we hear about some very advanced devotees who were doing this. And this is like a, a very deep meditation which they're doing because they're very deeply absorbed in remembering Krishna and they can meditate on particular services, doing particular activities in the service of Sri Radha. Like somebody may be boiling the milk, cooking the milk down into, uh, into cream or to make milk sweets, just boiling the milk to make the ghee. So, some people, some very advanced devotees, they meditate on doing these different things or maybe they're helping to decorate Srimati Radharani, to put the jewelry on and make the flower garlands to, to give to Lord Krishna. And they, some devotees, they, can, they absorb their mind in these different kind of services, very confidential services. So, a very high level of devotion. 
This is the most exalted method for those engaged in devotional service under the protection of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada understood that practically all of us joining the Krishna consciousness movement are in a low condition, we're not very qualified for that very advanced level of devotional service. So he encouraged everyone to preach. And I told yesterday also, we give the quote how Bhaktisvarup Damodar Maharaj, he wanted to uh, spend more time thinking up, you know, meditating on his Swarup, but Prabhupada told him, you preach to the scientists that life doesn't come from life, that life comes from life and not from matter, and Krishna will give you your Swarup, Krishna will reveal your Swarup by that preaching. So Prabhupada always encouraged us in the preaching activities, and we see this in Srila Prabhupada also in his own life. That while he wrote about these things, he himself was always busy in preaching and passing on the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. And this was the instruction of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Yari Deki Tari Kaho Krishna Upadesh. Amara Gaya Guru Hana Tarei Desh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell the people about Krishna. So this is the best way to make advancement in the present times. Right? So we'll go on. Someone would like to read the rest of this purport here? In this connection? Yes, Swarup. Swarup Krishna in, Prabhu? In this connection, Sila Bhakti Siddhanta. Saraswati, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes that even great sages and great devotees like Na, Narada and Sanaka do not get an opportunity to come to the Radha Kund and take their baths. What then to speak of ordinary devotee? If, the, if by great fortune one gets an opportunity to come to the Radha Kund and bathe even once, he can develop his transcendental love to Krishna exactly as the gopi did. It is also recommended that one should live in, on the banks of the Radha Kund and should be absorbed in the loving service of the Lord. One should bathe there regularly and give up all material conception, taking shelter of Sri Radha and her assistant gopis. If one is thus constantly engaged during his lifetime, after giving up the body, he will return back to Godhead to serve Sri Radha in the same way as he contemplated during his life on the banks of Radha Kund. The conclusion is that to live on the banks of the Radha Kund and to, to build their daily constitute the highest perfection of devotional service. It is a difficult position to attain, even for great sages and devotees like Narada. Thus, there is no limit to the glory of Sri Radha Kund. By serving Radha Kund, one can get an opportunity to become an assistant of Srimati Radha Rani under the eternal guidance of the gopis. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. So this is Bhakti, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur telling us that even great devotees like Narada and Sanaka, the four Kumar, from the four Kumars, that they do not get the opportunity to come to Radha Kund, to take their bath. So what to speak of ordinary devotees? So, if by great fortune, <laughs> certainly we have to understand how fortunate, how rare, and how we're really blessed to get this opportunity to go there to Radha Kund, and bathe even once, then he can develop love just like the gopis did. So we have to appreciate that it's a very, spe very, very special, very rare thing. And just like coming to Krishna consciousness, we also say, all right, the fortunate souls, Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagavanji. When the living entity is fortunate, then Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Beach, he gets the seed of devotion. 
So that's good fortune to contact the spiritual master and get the seed of devotion. And somebody may even be able to go on from that even further and get the opportunity to do service for Radha Kund. Now I was explaining how devo some devotees, they do service for Radha Kund, they go, they go and clean the banks of Radha Kund. And some people do parikrama around Radha Kund. So it's not just going in and bathing. There are other ways also to serve Radha Kund. And certainly we can also get a lot of purification by doing that kind of service. So living on the banks of Radha Kund, one should be absorbed in the service of the Lord. Now if we live on Radha Kund and we're just thinking about, oh my prasada, oh my bodily condition, oh I'm finding it very cold in the night here, and Radha Kund's water also has become cold, it's not so enjoyable as it was in the summer. <laughs> We're in the bodily concept of life. So that is not the mood to take bath in Radha Kund. We have to be in the mood of giving service to the Lord. And one should be there, give up all material conceptions. That's very difficult. We are conditioned souls and we do have a lot of material conceptions. The cold weather <laughs> and the, the, uh, in, in, the other people who may be there bathing in the lake, and the monkeys coming also, the turtles, the big turtles who are there in Radha Kund. There's so many different things. Uh, which we disturb our mind, we have to take shelter of Srimati Radharani and her assistant gopis. So, giving up the body, if we can, Prabhupada writes, if, or he's quoting Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati here, if one can reside there at Radha Kund throughout his life, then he can easily go back to Godhead and serve Srimati Radharani in the same way. No, people do go there, they're not always able to reside there very long. They may have the good intention in the beginning, but after some time their material conceptions come up and therefore they think about leaving and going other places. So, the glories of Radha Kund described here that even great devotees like Narada, they cannot get that opportunity. So it's very, very special. Therefore, if we do get the opportunity, we should be very careful to do it with the greatest respect and the greatest reverence. All right? So we've covered these points and we did talk about Srila Prabhupada's mood about bathing and residing in Radha Kund. Certainly Prabhupada would like us to get the benefit of that, but we must do it with the greatest respect and not make any offences. Otherwise Prabhupada said, you're kicking Radharani in the face, you're just kicking her. Very offensive. All right, so that's the conclusion of our. Uh, it's the conclusion of our study of the nectar of instruction. Are there any questions? Radha Kishori Maharaji has a question. Uh, Maharaj, how do we understand that uh, great devotees like Narad Muni, they do not even have the um, opportunity to come to Radha Kund, whereas we see many, many devotees living in Radha Kund, I mean, in, in material bodies, we see devotees living. How do we compare this? Yes, well, the, the point is made that even great devotees 
Narada Muni, of course, he's a spiritual master, he's the son of Brahma, and also Sanat Kumar, that, you know, that he's also son of Brahma, but they're not able to come. They're so pure, they're so qualified, but somehow they're not able to come. How is it possible? We could say, maybe this is, uh, this point is made just so to impress upon us the sanctity of this place, so that we will give even more respect and we will have more appreciation, the greatest appreciation for this place. Without, he maybe without hearing that we may take it lightly, but when we hear that even great devotees like Narada and Sanaka cannot come there, then we will take it more seriously, we will be more appreciative of the holy place and understand our good fortune. That's why we're being told like that, to help us, to, to impress upon us that we're so fortunate, we're just ordinary devotees, but somehow we've got, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, and the Krishna Consciousness Movement, we've got this very special opportunity that we could go to Radhakund and we can do some service there and we can get so much spiritual blessings. Thank you, Maharaj. Hmm? Gita Indu Lake Maharaji? Has a question? Hare, Hare Krishna Mahatma Prabhu. Maharaj, can we uh, like uh, think, like I think that the first four shlokas of Deshavrit are predominantly for the Kanisht and five to eight number shlokas are for, predominantly for Madhyam and seven to eleven shlokas are predominantly for Uttama Dikaris, like, like for the process. Can we think like this? Well, it's an interesting understanding, yes. I, I, I certainly don't see anything wrong in that, although it, that point was never made anywhere by any of our acharyas, but it's an interesting analysis which you've given, certainly, that the first three you say are for the Kanista, first four. First four. First four. First of all, are for the people on the lower stage of devotional service, mm. right? And then, certainly, and the others, we did speak that the, the, the Madhyam, this was describing the Madhyam, that he offers uh, Krishnati Yasha Giritam, that verse, that the, he, one who's beginning to chant the holy name, he respects in his mind. So that was the vision of the Madhyam. And, uh, and up to text number 8, where you hear about the, the, the Upadesha Saram, that becomes more for the a very advanced devotee, as you say, Uttama. Yeah, we, we could consider it like that. It's a good uh, interpretation. I think it's quite reasonable. Although we never hear it like this mentioned anywhere by any of the Acharyas. But I don't think I don't think it's off. I don't think there's anything wrong in that thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Thank you, Maharaj. Swarup Krishna Prabhu. Ganavas Maharaj. Maharaj from the poor. And the translation one understands that um, once pure love of Krishna is fully aroused, the concept of fully aroused is equivalent to being an assistant of Srimati Radharani under the eternal guidance of the gopis. One has only learned this, but one has not understood, and one has not realized. Number two is, my second question is, 
now we do not stay or we have hardly a chance to go to radha kunda but maybe we have visited once or twice we can remember to a certain extent will remembering radha kunda in our minds serving radha kunda and lead us to this uh, attainment of uh, full arousal of pure love Yes, I would say that remembering Radha Kund can also arouse, help you to arouse pure love for Krishna and service to a service in the mood of the gopis. I think remembering because devotional service can be performed both with the body and with the mind. You know, in the nectar of devotion is a famous example of the man who didn't have any paraphernalia to worship the Lord, but he worshipped the Lord in his mind. And then one day he was cooking sweet rice and he burned his finger in meditation. So on the basis of that example, I think if you're remembering Radha Kund, you'll get the results of the person who's actually living there. You can achieve the same destination as somebody else who's living there. If we have the right consciousness if we are thinking very respectfully about the Radhakund and the holy place, then it's very nice, yes. And you, as you say, we, we're, 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 we're learning this, we haven't realized it right. But the first step is learning and the realization will come as we go on hearing, as we go on serving. We will get more and more realization. Krishna will reveal to us. If we sincerely engage in Krishna's service, if we engage in our devotional practices, Krishna will give us that realization to understand more the nature of that holy place. The realization is going to come, but we have to be patient. We have to intensely practice and pray to Krishna to reveal to us the nature of these holy places. Our prayers are very helpful. Within our mind we can pray to Krishna, please help me to understand the importance of this holy place. So the Lord is in our heart. From the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, out of compassion for those Dwell, I dwelling in the heart, uh, uh, out of co to those who constantly worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So Krishna will give us the understanding if we simply go on with our worship of Krishna, right? So that it, 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 Krishna knows our heart. He knows our desire and if we genuinely desire to understand and realize more the glories of a holy place, then Krishna can reveal to us. And he can, if he doesn't reveal it himself in our heart, he will arrange for some pure devotee to come along to enlighten us by his realizations. Because the association of some great soul can also help us to understand more the glories of a holy place. That's why I say when we go to a holy place, we don't want to go alone. You want to go with, it's better to go with a group and to hear the glories of these different places described and explained by residents of the Dham, by people who are particularly qualified to explain these things. Right? Hare Krishna. Okay, question on chat. Okay. Please, Jyoti Radha Maharaji has a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, as I'm aware that my Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswamiji Maharaj, he doesn't take, uh, he doesn't prefer to take bath in Radha Kund. So how do we understand that? How do we seek 
permission for ourselves. I mean, we should follow his footsteps, or um, we should be asking him for the permission that we should take the bath in Radha Gunda. No, how do we understand that, Maharaj? So Maharaj has told you he doesn't like you to take bath there. We should accept that. He but say, huh? he Maharaj, himself Maharaj himself doesn't take bath there. But yeah. did it, has he said? Well, you can understand if he doesn't take bath there. You can understand he, he probably doesn't like his devotees, his disciples taking bath there either. So what to do? The, what I explained to you, there are other ways to serve Radha Kund. That you can, you can do parikrama and you, you can mentally take bath there. In the mind you can take bath and you can, also, you can do other services for the holy place by cleaning the place. Okay, understood. Understood, Maharaj. Thank you so much. But the order of the spiritual master is quite important, it's certainly very important. We give a lot of importance. We have faith in the order of the spiritual master. So, Maharaj doesn't like to take, he doesn't personally take bath there. So the indication is that he's not very eager to see his own disciples also take bath there because he, he must have also heard Prabhupada say that nobody should take bath there. So from now, it's because he heard about people misbehaving there, so Prabhupada had taken away, he told, no, from now on devotees should not pit, take bath there. So Gopal Krishna Maharaj must have heard that from Prabhupada. So he's taking that instruction from Srila Prabhupada and he's keeping Prabhupada's mood. Right? Gopal, because Gopal Krishna Maharaj, he was personally with Prabhupada and Vrindavan in those days at that time. So he must have heard that instruction from Prabhupada. So he's keeping that instruction. He's maintaining it. Now other people, other devotees, they're more, you know, independent, more free thinking and, you know, they will quote things like this and say, no, it's all right. And so, you know, it's different for different people. But you have a relationship with Gopal Krishna Maharaj, he's your spiritual master. And so it's only respectful to follow his example. And like, and like I say, you know, just, you can take bath in your meditation and you can think about bathing there in the Radha Kund. And you can parikram there, do your parikram, do dandabhat parikrams around Radha Kund. You know, so many ways you can find to do service there. You can go there and distribute prasadam to the pilgrims there. Do some seva for the Dambasis. Things like that. And this way you get the same benefit as taking bath there. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Ananta Vijay Prabhu. Ananta Vijay has a question. Nobody talking. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, Dandavat Pranam Maharaj, I have uh, one question. Uh -huh. So, we heard that uh, Radha Kun is the highest place and the holiest place in this uh, in whole world, or in the whole universe. That uh, Radharani also was uh, take birth in uh, Yawat or uh, his her, her lilas were in Barstanas also. Uh, why there is no mention about Barsana, is the place of Radharani? Because Krishna is not going there very often to Barsana, right? 
that's Radharani's place. But the particular, the point, you have to understand, we're talking about where the rasa is the greatest. The rasa, the loving exchange between Radha and Krishna is the greatest, the most intense at Radha Kund, not at Varsana. We don't hear about Krishna going to Varsana. Oh, we do. We know when, when Srimati Radharani was born, her eyes were closed. And um, Maharaj Vrishabhanu and Kirtida, they were worried that why our daughter doesn't open her eyes? And so then it happened after some time, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda came there with baby Krishna. And baby Krishna was crawling and he came in front of Srimati Radharani and she immediately opened her eyes. So the first person she saw was Lord Krishna. And so that's the only pastime I know about Krishna coming to Varsana. Otherwise, Radha and Krishna, they meet at different places like at Radha Kund. And it's at Radha Kund where there's the greatest intimacy. So you have to understand the rasa then you can appreciate the importance of Radha Kund. But at Varsana, the mother and father are there. You know, <laughs> Radha and Krishna can't have the same affectionate dealings for each other with Radharani's mother and father there. <laughs> and so that's why Varsana is not there. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Ananta Pandit Prabhu. Ananta Pandit Prabhu has a question. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, dari pertama saya ingin firstly. I would like to ask from my experience visiting Radha So I saw some Brahman, Brahmanas that inviting us to do some rituals, some puja, saying that if we do this ritual, we will get pure love of Radha Krishna. Yeah? And it seems that we are forced to do that. So what is, should be our attitude? So if we leaving them like that, when they invited us, we want to do it. So it looks like they want to curse us. And the second is, the Prabhupada understand the intimacy of the love of Radha and Krishna. Maybe Maharaj can describe a little bit. So that's the second question. The first question, how should be our mood to the Brahmana that is... Well, the mood to the, lo the local people, the local pandits there, you have to understand, you know, they're, they have to maintain themselves and they're, you know, they're, they're pious people. And so they have to get some money somewhere. <laughs> so the pilgrims come and they look to them to give some donations. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he actually uh, told his disciples that when they come to holy place, they have to give some donations to the beggars, that was. He said the beggars, even you give some small donation to them. And similarly, the pandits, the brahmanas there in the holy place, you know, you have to, you have to understand, they have to maintain these temples and they need some contributions, just like we have our temple and people are there looking for donations also. And so we have to understand their nature. Sometimes they're very aggressive and pushy. If you don't give them, they get really upset. 
oh, what, what, to, what, to be, what can be done? Anyway, you try to give something, if you have something, you give some small donation just to pacify them, to keep them happy. Try to do something. If you're a group of people, they expect like that, you know, they expect you, they try to get you to do something. So, you try to, try to contribute something for them. It's, uh, it makes life a bit easier. If you don't give them, then, you know, they can make your life really tough. They can give you a lot of trouble. <laughs> Hmm. So that's, that's why I say, when you go there, be careful, better to go with a group where you have some leaders, people who are very familiar and who know these people, then they know how to deal with them. But if we go there, we're strangers, we haven't been there much, and we don't know these people, they don't know us, they come to us looking for money, we don't know what to do. But if somebody's there who's... who's familiar, who lives in Vrindavan, who often comes to Radhakund, then they can guide us and they can tell us what's expected. There are some temples where this is a big problem. If you go like to Shakshi Gopal, it's quite notorious. They say Shakshi Gopal temple, the pundits there are really very heavy, very ruthless. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, we have to respect them, their brahmanas, their pandits, their residents of the holy place. So try to be respectful and keep calm, don't get all worked up. And try to contribute according to your means. Uh, as far as uh, the pastimes of Radha Kund, we are simply told that this is the place where Radha and Krishna would come, you know. Well, we know that Krishna called the holy rivers there and Srimati Radharani also created her kund with the help of Krishna. They brought all the holy waters from all the holy rivers together to create these kunds. And it was the place of greatest intimacy. Because when Srimati Radharani would go to Rasa dance, she would see Krishna with all the other gopis. Krishna, of course, expands himself. It, it is said, uh, Rasa Lila, Krishna would have two gopis, one gopi on each side, and there would be many Krishnas, many expansions. Krishna would expand himself many times, and he'd have two gopis, one on the left, one on the right. Each Krishna would have two gopis. But for Srimati Radharani, there was only one, one, it was only Krishna and Srimati Radharani. So Krishna made that special consideration for Srimati Radharani. But still, she wasn't happy with it. It wasn't, and she didn't like that Krishna had to be there with so many other gopis. So sometimes, she would go away and Krishna would have to go and look for her, find her. But at Radha Kund, there's less people and only the very intimate associates of Radha and Krishna are there. So they can enjoy the company more. It's more relaxed mood and less people. And it's more intimacy. So this is this Radha Kund, this is a place of the greatest uh, emotional, the greatest loving exchange, deepest loving exchange takes place there between Radha and Krishna. So that's why Rupa Goswami is glorifying it. You know, I, I, I haven't read all the books of the Goswamis. I don't know if he's written about the pastimes which actually took place there at Radha Kund. I've never personally heard anyone describe particular pastimes which took place there in Radha Kund. We're simply told that it's a place of greatest intimacy with all the young, all the, just a, a few people, Radha and Krishna and a few of their maybe a few of the manjaris, the young, very young gopis, 
like Rupa Goswami, who is Rupa Manjari. So maybe he may have also been there, and he knows the pastime. So therefore, he he can glory. He can actually tell us. He's telling us that this Radhakund is the topmost place, the highest place of all places. He's bringing our attention to that Radhakund. He wants us to understand the importance of this place. Yes, another question on chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Can we live in Radhakund to serve the samadhi of our guru? Yes, that's a good reason to live there. That's a very good, I think you'd be justified to live there in Radhakund and to serve your guru's samadhi. So if we give some charity to the beggars or the sadhus and the beggars near, living near who are living there at Radhakund, and if we give them some donations, and if they use it for sinful activities, will we get the karma for that? Well, uh, it's very, it's not very common that. First of all, when we give charity to beggars, you don't give a lot of money. You know, you give a rupee or two, five rupees maximum probably. You know, the, the people who are begging there, they don't expect to get a lot of money. They're sitting there with a few coins and you give them a coin, they're happy. So we don't give a lot of money to beggars, so it's not that they're going to do sinful activities with it. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had instructed his disciples that you should, you should give them because they're pious people, they're in the holy place and they're sitting there outside the temple and so they deserve some charity. And that's the proper charity to give in a holy place. You come to a holy place, that's the proper place to give charity. And you, when we give charity, it's good to give charity to people who are in need of charity. So people are sitting begging, possibility is they're very poor, they have nothing. And we give them some charity, so it's appreciated. It's actually the ha charity in the mode of goodness. When we come to the holy place, it's expected that people will come to give some charity. But, of course, if people will use the charity for sinful activities, then it's, it's not good. So we try to be cautious about that. We're, we want to be careful where we give the charity. We want to be sure it's going to be used properly. So that's why I say you go with somebody who's familiar with the place and then they can properly guide us. They know who are the genuine people and who are not. But it, it is the, the culture that you come to the holy place, we're expected to give some, some little charity according to our means. <coughs> and giving charity in a holy place it's very unlikely that they're going to use it for something sinful. No more. Hmm? No more. No more All right. There is one question, but it doesn't look like. Yeah. I'm sorry, Maharaj. There is one more from Udawa Prabhu. I was still translating. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, 
That's a question, right? right? They should find the answer from, for themselves from the book. <laughs> well, maybe he just wants to check and make sure that he's got it right. I just the with them. I talked to them after the class. Mm -hmm. Have we got that question from Uddhava? Yes, Maharaj, I've typed. Oh, you're typing it in the chat? Okay. It's already there. Huh? It's already there. Can you read it? What is the meaning of once they live in Radhakund, someone can develop pure love towards Radha Krishna? What is the meaning? What is the meaning? I think you explained it in detail. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of once they means once they live in Radha Someone can develop pure love towards Radha Krishna. They are asking, what is the meaning of this sentence that just by bathing once in Radha Kund, someone can develop pure love towards Radha Krishna? Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what is the meaning of once bathing in Radha Someone can develop pure love. But the point is to understand the power of Radha Kund. The Radha Kund is not any ordinary bathtub, but it's the most holy water, it's the most powerful spiritual place, and taking a bath there is something which we have to do when we're mentally prepared. We have to be qualified to bathe there. And the qualification is that we followed all the earlier instructions described in the first ten verses. When we have controlled the urges and we have faithfully given up the bad habits and cultivated the good habits and loving exchange and respecting devotees, chanted the holy name, developed a taste for the holy name, and understand, we've understood the hierarchy of the holy places, and we've understood the hierarchy of the devotees and how Srimati Radharani is the topmost personality and how her kund is non different from her, then we can bathe there in Radha kund. And then we can develop that pure love. Very powerful experience. But we have to be qualified. We want pure love of Krishna. You have to really want it. You have to be really intensely desiring that. You have to have a very strong greed for that. Not something that, oh, I want love of Krishna today and then tomorrow you want something else. No, it has to be genuine greed to get love of Krishna. Then Krishna may or Srimati Radharani may reciprocate, may give us that opportunity. We have to be very, very sincere. That's the, the main point, our sincerity. And then it can happen. And Rupa Goswami said, bathing once, it may happen bathing, bathing once, you may bathe regularly. Raghunath Das Goswami was residing there. He would take bath three times every day. Morning, midday and evening. But Raghunath Das was bathing. You could say he was a Siddha Deha. He was a liberated soul. He was not in the bodily concept of life. 
and he resided there in Radhakund until his old age. People could hardly understand how he could live. He hardly ate. He hardly slept. You want to understand the Goswamis? Read the Goswami Astikam, how they gave up everything. They gave up eating and sleeping. They, they took loin cloths. They gave up all their opulence to live as mendicants under a different tree every night. So the Goswamis, and they are showing us this uh, Upadesha Amrita, they are showing us the instructions by their example, by how they live. You want to be a Goswami? Study that Goswami Astikam. Prabhupada also told us, he said, when I was a young man, he said, I gave up eating, I gave up mating and defending while I was a young man. He said, now in my old age, I have also given up eating and sleeping. So, the Goswamis, they were like that. They were in that mood. They didn't worry, they didn't think about, it wasn't like they had to force themselves not to eat. They didn't even think about it because they were so absorbed in Krishna consciousness. They were so busy chanting and hearing about Krishna and doing parikramas and offering obeisances and doing all the different devotional activities. They just never thought about hunger. It never came in their mind or sleep. They didn't think about it. They're so busy. And that was like their daily affair. It wasn't, you know, we may be like that one day when there's a big festival coming or something, we have a lot to do and we really make efforts. But then we collapse after it. But the Goswamis, they were like this every day. All right, is it clear? Prabhu, are you clear about it now? Uddhava? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Where is it on the chat? Not on the chat. He is, uh, he is trying to actually ask the question on the Vamiki, you have a question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, in this way I would like to just uh, very thank, thank you for everything and um, uh, just let you know that uh, this uh, Bhakti Shastri course, uh, <clears throat> it is very, uh, I, I found uh, very nice and very helpful for my consciousness and uh, especially with your guidance and explanations and realizations and you like you uh, uh, very, very nicely uh, you try to uh, explain uh, to us uh, everything so thank you Maharaj uh, uh, I, I according to my knowledge uh, this is last uh, um, last uh, uh, your lesson and the, 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 then uh, we will have another teacher for different units so in this way I, I would like to very 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 thank you for your valuable time and explanations thank you very much thank you very much Maharaj okay thank you Prabhu for your kind words wish you good luck in your, the rest of the course all right Maharaj. yes thank you Okay, I would like to, I'd like to echo what Vandiki Prabhu said. Thank you very much for uh, mediating these sessions. Okay. Uh, and it was uh, All right. very enlightening. Anyway, our uh, class coordinator has some words to say. Right? You want to address that? Announcement being announced to make all the plans. Huh? I have an announcement to make all the plans. Yeah. So Prabhu will speak now.
Just give a minute. Abhi just, just, Abhi just, just coming. He's just logging on. I want to thank, express my heartfelt gratitude to Maharaj for teaching and from instruction to all of us. Is my, is my voice better now? Yes. Thank you. Let me... Maharaj, I can... No, no, you turn off the... Uh, I'll turn off the... So it doesn't echo. Where? Or if you can turn off the sound. So this one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Hare Krishna. Okay, now it's done. Yes, Hare Krishna. Can everyone hear me? Loud and clear now? I couldn't hear you. So now can you please, can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is, is Abhijit, your course coordinator. So we are uh, uh, at the last lesson for this unit. I hope all of you had a nice experience and you got to learn a lot about uh, improving sadhana and taking us to a next level. I want to make an announcement about your exam that is coming up. Uh, as all of you know, it was posted on WhatsApp. Your exam is on Sunday, that is day after tomorrow. The closed book exam. It is a one hour exam and it will be, the time is 5.30 p.m. The same time as the class, 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. Now. It will, the time will be the same for everybody, meaning we will have a Zoom session where students can log in with your two camera setup that uh, I hope everyone knows about, I have mentioned on WhatsApp also. There will be one camera as usual that you are using right now to participate in Zoom. That camera will be uh, focused on your, uh, uh, that camera will be uh, towards you or if you are writing some some students in exceptional cases we are allowing them to write on paper so it will be focusing on their paper for them for others the camera is just facing you and you are you are writing your answers on the laptop and there will be a camera behind you you have to set up either a smartphone or a laptop that's behind you that's looking at the screen of the first computer that's in front of you so that's the two camera setup all of you who are giving on zoom uh, will have to have these two camera setups 